Hey everybody, welcome to Workforce Gaming. I'm Brad, here with Doug. Hi. Your hi sounded really weird there. Anyway, Doug's been playing a game called Subnautica, which is a game I didn't really hear anything about until the past couple of days, and I feel like everybody's yep. been talking about it everywhere, that it's super interesting and weird, and I guess I'm not really even still sure what it is. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't t- totally sure what it was because uh, I, I basically just it, I sort of had picked it up as kind of just like a pack in with a humble bundle, like maybe about it. I don't know, a few months, maybe a year ago, I guess, when it's still in early access. And it was just I was just kind of it just at the time it was just like I knew it was an underwater exploration game. I remember like I loaded it up. I saw that I had a food bar, a water bar. Ew. And then I was just like, nope. And it didn't run super well <laughs> on my computer. So I turned it off. And then uh, didn't touch it for like about, I don't know, a year. <laughs> uh, and, th- and then I had heard that I kept hearing like rumblings of this thing being pretty good. Like kind of like what you were saying. It's like in recent months, like people are talking about it. It's yeah. Like, oh, okay. Well, I mean, I have it sitting here. I'll just boot it up. We'll see what people are talking about. And it's awesome. It's really, really, really cool. So what sets it apart from other survival games? Because as soon as you say like food and water bar, I'm instantly not interested. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I instantly was not interested either because of food and water bars. Um, so when you do put up the game, I will say there is, an, and this might actually interest you, there's an option to turn off your food and water bars. Okay, um, that makes this game much more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's like survival mode and then exploration mode. So I, I, I have the food and water bars on. And if you guys don't know, I mean, maybe people don't know what food and water bars are when we're talking about. So uh, real quick, their survival genre is this kind of, it's not, if we're going to say newest genre, it's probably not but it's a more popular genre recently where it's basically the goal is not necessarily to get to the through a story get to the end of the game the the goal of the game is just to collect resources use those resources to build things and then find food and water so your character is like stays hydrated keeps healthy and that sort of thing basically just live um, as long as you can yeah exactly um i think one of the more popular ones is don't starve which kind of which i oddly do of, like and i don't know why i like that one yeah i, I don't yeah i would never touch that game um <laughs> Um, but I, I think the thing with the survival genre in general is that I don't generally like the settings of survival games. Yeah. Um, the survival games like that I think are more popular, like set in the woods or set on a generic island and at night things come to get you yep. and they're scary and those sort of thing. Um, so I think the setting of Subnautica is very, is like what really, really sets it apart from like a bunch of other games. Um, and it's, it's kind of what got me interested because I love, love, love underwater scenes in games like Abzu. I adore because it's set underwater. Yeah. Like if that was set in the sky and it's the exact same game, you're like, I don't know. Well, no, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Any setting that's had a Bioshock is what you're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Um, so so what, it, what it is, it's it's a game that like slowly reveals its hand over time which i which i really like because it's good going into this game kind of not knowing what it was like i think it was better for me to have not looked up anything about this game um because literally what it starts with is that your spaceship crash lands okay and you get ejected into skate pod and your your spaceship crash lands on an ocean planet and like the game like opens up with like you trying to get out of your like your your escape pod thing. So you get out of your escape pod, like, oh, okay, you're out of your escape pod. And like literally you're just standing in the middle of an ocean Ooh. with like this like little kind of like um you know like it's space shuttles, like when they when they land when they land the ocean, they kinda of like float up to the top and they have the, the sort of color. Yeah, I think thing. there was a scene like that in Interstellar. Probably I haven't seen Interstellar, but there's there's <laughs> that scene in every space movie ever. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um so it opens up and you have this gigantic humongous spaceship that's just crash landed in front of you, but it's just it's just open ocean for like miles around. Yep. And it's just like, okay, this is the setting of the game. Okay, I guess. But as soon as you go underwater, it is this like insanely detailed, awesome space alien coral reef. Um so basically what it is, like you kind of you so you swim around and <clears throat> There's all these like weird, like around you, like in the immediate areas, like these like manatee things that have like these weird glowing things and they like shoot out gas at you and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And there's all these like weird fish with giant eyeballs and some of them want to hurt you and some of them don't. And basically what the game is, is that you're trying to, yeah, I guess, you, I guess in the, they give you an immediate goal of saying that you're the reactor on your spaceship is going to melt down in three hours. And I was like, oh shit. And you don't, it doesn't tell you how to stop it. <laughs> or if you can stop it. Yep. I didn't, I screwed up. I didn't stop it, but I don't know if I screwed up. I've, I'm like 15 hours in the game. I blew, I blew up. Well, 15 so hours know. is past three hours. So I think you did something right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
but ba- but it, it really really just lets you go um and what you basically need to do is so, so you just basically explore the ocean you collect materials you use those materials to either you could like eat fish or build equipment um and the thing that's really really neat about the game is that i think in most games like when you craft things once you craft it you just like okay i suddenly have a better sword okay i already yeah. had a sword but now i have a better sword but in this one because you start with nothing as soon as you craft like say something like a scanner suddenly the entire game changes and now because you have a scanner you can now identify things now collect blueprints and then it'll, it'll tell you which fish are poisonous which are this which are that so you're crafting um, unique things as opposed to just improving existing equipment yeah yeah exactly so like you need to just craft your basic equipment to begin with so basically what it is like once you craft it you now have an entire new gameplay thing to play with hmm. as opposed to it like no most crafting system to me i just find them like absolutely like just mind numbing because it's like i just need this plus two sword man just give it to me i don't want to collect five pounds of honey six pounds of steel and whatever else yeah uh, but in this one it's like but like once you craft a piece of equipment it's only completely changed the game so for example um one of the first things well, the first thing it tells you is to get is to get to the ship so when you go back to the ship suddenly there's this irradiated area um, but then you can get a radiation suit and now you can ex- now, but once you get a radiation suit, you can now explore this entire part of the reef that, that was completely cut off because it's irradiated. And now you have this whole new area to explore or say, for example, you only have like 10 seconds of air or you have a very low amount of air to begin with. Yeah. But now that you, but now that you craft an O2 tank and now you can explore for like way, way deeper now because you have more breath. So, huh. So basically what is like these things that you're crafting and exploring are basically letting you expand your exploration. So... So I'm getting kind of like a survival game mixed with like a Metroidvania. Metroidvania is definitely not the right word because it's definitely there's no hard line of like you cannot go past this point. Like you could swim on the ocean forever, you're just gonna run out of food and die. Okay. Um, it's kind of like so like in the in the beginning area. So I was like I was kind of I was kind of swimming in the area. And there's like this gigantic trench, and I was like, oh man, I want to go down that trench. But as soon as you get closer, you're like, I'm gonna run out of breath before I get to the bottom. Like even like your like your vision starts to blur and stuff like that. So it, it, I guess, in the sense of like it allows more area. They're they're basically tools to allow you to explore further and further and further out. Hmm. Um, and because, um, it's it, because it's sort of this like gradually expanding sphere of exploration. Um, it is really cool because it, it it feels like they have like just out of your equipment limit range. Let's say they always have like a new thing to see. So like you'll first go to an area that you can't quite get to yet, but you can see a whole new species like way down underwater. You're like, crap, I could probably get down there eventually. So what I'm going to do is like, my goal is now to see that fish that's down there. So I'm going to go and try to do all my damnedest to go see that fish. <laughs> this <laughs> or, sounds like the perfect game for you. Cause I'm just picturing you going like, that looks really pretty. How do I get to that pretty thing? No, exactly. In the game, it's so, so cool how the game like just slowly, cause it knows like, it should like the farther you go out, the riskier it is to go out, but the cooler shits that's out there. The deeper you go, the more yeah. risky oh, yeah. it is to go down, the cooler the shit is down there. Um and like one of the cool things is like one there's like a part where you can craft a like a jet ski, and now you can travel like four times as far in like whatever direction you want. Hmm. Um so like over here there's like a deep sea trench. Over here is like um uh, spoilers. Over here is <laughs> <laughs> Um, but the thing that's kind of cool is that it does sort of like lead you to these new locations because, um, every, so what you do is like, you collect your resources, you go back to your like little escape pod, you craft your thing and keep going, but everyone so they get radio signals and radio signals will kind of show you like, Hey, there's a radio signal out here. So go swim to this area or you'll get a radio signal for over here and go swim to that area sort of thing. Um, so it does kind of guide, it definitely feels like it holds your hand just a little bit to sort of like guide you and like, well, here's sort of the direction you might want to go in kind of thing. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, no, it, it's really, really neat. And the, th- and the thing, I think the thing with, sort of, with a lot of survival games, I feel like, I just feel like th- this game is like, it's everything is secondary to the explore, to the, to facilitating the exploration. Like the survival aspects are not nearly as mean as other survival games I've played. Like the goal is less to survive through the day and more like, plan ahead to see if you can like see more of the game gotcha um so it sounds like there's kind of almost like a path that it's pushing you down but it's also a survival game correct yeah essentially so how does a survival game kick in because i'm thinking like don't starve like if you're gonna play don't starve you play for like a couple hours you die you reset everything completely does it not have that idea of a survivor game survival game because i guess in my mind you should be dying a lot in a survival game and restarting and going okay I learned now that I need to do blank 
But this sounds like if you're exploring every time that that would get boring because you're essentially exploring the same path over and over again. Oh, well, no, no. I mean, it's it's not as mean as other survival games. Like the survival aspects are a part of it, but it's like a minor part of it. Like, for example, if you need clean water and food, there's a type of fish that can get you clean water and food and it's right next to your vessel like most of the time. Gotcha. Um, so, so it's, it's so it's not a survival mm-hmm. game in the sense of you're restarting every half hour to three hours. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Try no, again. No. It's a survival game in terms of like just the main gameplay mechanic is to survive and see stuff. Yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, so like, I'm not repeating the same areas. Like, I guess, I, I guess you do essentially, you are essentially going back to your ship to rebuild things, but eventually you get the power to build a base. So you can actually move your base to like an area you're exploring. So now you don't have to go back as far. Okay. So you can see, so, so yeah, you could actually move like your entire, like that's, that's the part I am at now is like actually like building my new base essentially. And that's like a whole other gameplay aspect of building your base. And I, dude, I, I don't know, man, this game is just like, it's so, so interesting and cool just because of little rewards of the new fish you see and like some of the things like the game's kind of freaky too because like the some of the things are humongous like some of the things like you see in the water like just way up it's like that's not a thing that's not a (laughs) holy shit that is a real living creature thing and it is humongous and um it's kind of and there's actually a story that you slowly unravel um there's things that you find under the water that is not part of your spaceship um, but it's definitely not the local fauna. So there is some like um, world building more bigger picture than just like you crashed and are looking at fish. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. And, but it's fun cause you have to find the plot. Like you don't, you don't know what the plot is until like you actually find the area where the plot sort of starts moving a little bit. Oh. Hmm. Um, yeah. And, it, but, but there's all these kind of clever visual markers that sort of help you kind of guide you in the direction, but it's definitely like, it definitely feels like more like a free form exploration game that does a survival game. Um, I just haven't really played anything like that before. And I think the setting really helps it. Yeah. It um, almost sounds like you're kind of mixing. It almost sounds like no man's sky underwater the way you're describing yes. it. Yes. Except it's not randomly generated. So some guy actually built this map by hand. So Which it's more better. It's much better. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So I guess kind of to wrap this up. Yeah. The general feeling i'm getting is this is a survival game that's just exploration so yeah ultimately do you i know you said you're like 15 hours and you're doing this base building stuff is there like an ending point to this because like no man's sky like Mm -hmm. i said i feel like it seems like an apt comparison and that really doesn't necessarily have an ending is this just kind of like one of those things that goes on forever because if it's not procedurally generating then there obviously has to be an end to things if i i mean i will say like the the aspects that I have gotten to, it feels like it, it, the game starts with you feeling like there's no story. It's just like a survival game. But as you find certain areas, you'll kind of realize that there are maybe countdown timers at play and things that are actually moving hmm. that you aren't aware of. Um, and I have gotten to a point where there is now a clear goal and there's a clear thing that is happening that you are not aware of until you have explored out far enough and maybe just happen to hit that spot that you need to hit ah uh, okay so had you not chose to explore into the deep trench you might not have found this right away yeah okay but but what happens is like there's a lot of things that would probably have eventually led you to that spot anyway like a lot of clues that would have eventually led you to that spot okay. so it's not like my path was the only way to it is there's probably like multiple ways to get to that point in time hmm. and then once you get to that point in time um the game like it opens up. It suddenly has like a sense of urgency that you weren't quite aware of, but I, I don't, it's, and it, it, but there, I mean, there is a plot that's moving, but it is, it is a plot that you're slowly discovering, which I also kind of like, cause it's definitely not clear at first yeah. because your thing is just to survive. And now suddenly it's not just to survive. It's to do something else too, um, which is mega spoilers. Cause I can't really talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Um, but the games, it's just, it's just a game that's slow. Like, like I was saying though, like I didn't know it's like four hours in until what was actually happening. Yeah, which is kind of cool that you don't necessarily know off the top of your head, which I like that. Very mm. interesting. I guess that makes it sense is. why people would be talking about this because it does sound like kind of a cool mishmash of genres, so to speak. Yeah, it's super gorgeous, and the creature design is off the charts. So, <laughs> <laughs> bonus points for Doug there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we are Workforce Gaming. You can follow us at Workforce Gaming on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube or wherever you're listening, and we will see you later. Bye.